Folks, you have been absolutely swindled, bamboozled, I'd say, by the domain, roped in here thinking that all we're going to be talking about is the Master Chief and his helmet. And while we are going to be addressing that in this video, this is a general, broader conversation about Halo, about the IP, and about the fan base. And if you, you know, see the comment, see the thumbnail, and immediately want to leave a really horrible comment and a dislike, please do keep in mind, I've been a Halo fan my entire life, I've had this YouTube channel for over 12 years. I want what's best for Halo, and I'm here to just rationally talk through a few points. I really hope that you take the time to listen to me before you go straight into disliking what the context of this video might be. And also, I am pretty sick right now. I'm also redecorating my entire room. It's empty, and I've got an eye infection, and I'm kind of dying. But I really wanted to say my piece because we're 24 hours out of the next season of the Halo TV show launching. And maybe I'm going to be really wrong. I kind of don't feel like I am. This might age poorly. I don't really care. I'm still going to say my piece on behalf of what I think is the broadest part of the Halo community. I think. I hope. And uh, for the rest of the video, we're going to just narrate over some Halo Infinite footage because, um, again, I don't really want to be on front of camera right now. But we are 24 hours outside of season two and I really want to say my piece so I really do hope you enjoy all right so where do we begin with this topic uh, I want to first say this is something that I've been putting off for a couple of months because this is so polarizing to say right I've wanted to make this kind of video for over a year but it's finding the right moment and it's also kind of to be honest having the bravery to do it because Halo <sighs> The fan base is very passionate. I'm a lifelong Halo fan, but the comments, like the reaction to anything surrounding the Chief showing his face has always been visceral. Like the fans absolutely deny it at every level. And I understand, right? You, you've been with this character for two decades. You have a certain set of like principles that you want to attain to this character and you don't want him to stray away from what you believe is the core fundamentals. And I think a lot of that is because of how he was introduced and how Bungie envisaged him at first. They always said he was a mask, like a faceless character that you could put your identity onto. And also I apologize if there's a couple of like hiccups in this video. I'm doing this on the spot, no script. I just wanna try and get my point across as best I can. And, you know, when you when you have 20 years to decide who that character is, because in originally in the Bungie games, his motivations are very cut and clear. They, they, it, he just is defending humanity, he's stopping the government, he's saving Cortana. And a lot of his, you know, personal motivations you have to decide for yourself, or you leave them completely to the wayside you say that doesn't matter like he he is what he is but 343 industries did uh something that uh, uh, for some reason is is highly polarizing with halo fans and that's give the master chief a real character like a real character to develop like he had huge ups and downs and showed weakness in in the actual 343 games. He was still the stoic hero. He still pushed through and defeated any matter of, of enemy, but you saw his emotional side. And if I've been with a character for 20 years, that's what I want to see. Like, I don't just want this, 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 this bland, featureless and emotionless character. And there were reasons behind it, you know, um, particularly in the TV show, they explore a lot about these inhibitor chips that stop you from feeling every emotion. And I get that. But for me, it's like I'm playing the sixth Master Chief mainline story, apart from him kind of being <laughs> sidelined in Halo 5, but I'm playing the sixth Master Chief story. I want to feel something for the character. So I want to see him evolve. I want to see him grow. Do I want to see his face personally in a Halo game? No, not really. I really enjoy how they did it in Combat Evolved, where they showed him taking his helmet off once he was in the short sword and away from Halo. And I enjoyed the fact that they showed his, like a slit of his face in Halo 4. But God, I remember the reaction to that. First of all, it's a legendary ending. Second of all, he just shows his eyes. Man, it's it, like... It's not a big deal. We knew he was a middle-aged white dude. And 
you can just see his face and his wrinkles. And I want to humanize the Master Chief. I want to feel like he's a character that I've grown up with and I've want, I want to see him grow over the years. Now, the Halo TV series showed the Master Chief's face in episode one. Was that the right move? It is questionable. Should he show his face going forward? I don't really see how people say no. I, I don't really get it. Because in the context of the mainline Halo games, all we've seen is the Chief in active combat, basically. We see him a couple of times. We see him on the br at bridge in Halo 4. Um, we, we see him out of duty a little bit, but most of the time he's at war, right? We see him like in the control rooms in Sierra, Crow's Nest um, in Halo 3, but a lot of the time I feel like he's more in active service. Now, yeah, in Halo 2, you also see him on Cairo Station Bridge and he's in his full armor, but that's kind of like an award ceremony. The books, the general media refer to the chief removing his helmet all the time. But you get something like a Halo TV series, right? Because a TV series is following a lot more than just the active battles. One of the main kind of, it's not a criticism at all, but like when you're watching, say, these cutscenes, um, they wouldn't make sense without the actual gameplay a lot of the time. I have a lot of friends who are not actual fans of the like playing the games, but they love the cutscenes. A lot of people have got into collecting Halo products because they love the cutscenes. They love the the war, the law, the lore of the war. Um, and you know, between the different cutscenes, you wouldn't really know much of what's going on. Now, in Halo Infinite, bit of a different story. He's literally in active combat the entire time. But you have like the the TV series. Which, like, what I want to see from a TV series, I want to see the 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 world fleshed out. I want to see Oni. I want to see Reach. I want to see civilians. I want to see the expanded universe. I want to see different planets and different colonies. Now, is the Chief just walking around in his full set of armor in all of those scenarios? Maybe some of them, yes. But you, you, you imagine an episode of the TV series, or you imagine a scene of it, where it's an Oni boardroom... And they're having an off-duty, well, not off-duty, but a, a general meeting between different um, military higher-ups and Oni and a couple of the Spartans. And Chief's just sat there in full armor. Like, does that make sense? Like, the more I think about it, it, it doesn't. And I, I get, like, I'm not saying that either way is wrong. Absolutely. But I'm... Well, I kind of am with the title of this video. <laughs> I, I like, I think that if you want a story, like a TV series where we're spending, uh, let's say eight hours with the character, I want to see his face. And I know that the main example is The Mandalorian, right? The Mandalorian season one, oh, well, The Mandalorian at large barely shows old Pablo's face, mainly because he's not in that damn suit, but um, also because it's it's a creed of aliens. It's a race that have literally got this religion surrounding them not taking the armor off and not showing their face. This is not that. Like, why would the Master Chief, when he's on reach amongst civilians, no threat in sight, why would he wear his armor? Like, why would any soldier wear their armor when they're not in active duty? He doesn't just walk around, like, every bridge of every, every deck of every ship just in his armor. Like, it it just doesn't make sense. And look, I'm not here to convince you, right? Like, I know that even when I'm going through this in my mind, like, I've tried to have this conversation with people and everybody just rejects it firmly. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people reject it firmly. But we're at a point now where the season, season one has already released and he's already showed his face many times now first of all in the first episode he shows his face for a noble reason he is told to execute a child just after he's um, started to regain memories of his childhood and touched a foreigner artifact the foreigners and halo at large has always been about weird alien technology and mysteries and you know even like even the things that the librarian did to the master chief to alter his dna even the fact that, you know, humans are, are evolved um, 
forerunners essentially in some ways that like they've been they've been altered and they're they're the mantle of responsibility for the galaxy the 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 idea that um the chief wouldn't necessarily react like that if he touched a, a foreigner artifact like it's a different timeline and i know people don't like that but i have some good reasoning behind why it's a different timeline right i don't understand as a tv show how you could make a halo show that lasts many seasons that is such a, a large budget and set it in the same universe because the crossover is just not there I imagine, certainly, like, I've seen that a very, very large percentage of the people that watch a Halo TV show that's funded by one of the biggest streaming platforms in the world, one of the most expensive TV shows in the world, how can people, um, how can they understand this TV show if you've got to understand all of the lore and the implications of the previous games? If you had a Halo game, why would you want, like, I, I could see the people complaining that they have to research and 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 uh, and look up all the facts and immerse themselves in the facts about the TV show when they don't care about the TV show because they want to understand implications in the game. One of the reasons that Marvel has become so convoluted is you have to know every other TV show and the, re the, the implications and the law implications of every other TV show and movie to understand the current one. You can't do that with, with Halo. Like, you can't have a, a, a multi-million dollar... Um, TV show come out and people have to understand the existing lore of the video games. You can't have the vi the next video game coming out and the being implications from the TV show. Like the TV show would never be able to tackle big universe altering implicating like scenarios if it was based on lore that would then have to be referenced and implicated into the the games because I I don't know if you've seen the Halo games are already ridiculous enough like they switch moods and 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 themes between each halo game and each halo game barely has a connecting thread to the previous one like they can't even do it with all the games i don't know why they would be able to do it with a tv show like um the uh the spartan lock halo tv show nightfall um and the the ford into dawn i mean ford into dawn is a masterful tv show i love that but um it was only, like, the chief only cameoed in it. So, like, I never thought that the Halo TV show would be canon. I never really understood how it could be. And if you don't make it canon, you're already uh, sort of woven into this problem where you can't really, if you're making a Halo TV show, you can't really have any other character than the Master Chief because he's the only recognizable character of, of all, like, he's the only recognizable character in, in, in all of Halo, really, to, to, a, to a full audience, to, like, a modern audience, and, like, every dad has watched the Halo TV show and knows who the Master Chief is, but has no idea about anything else, doesn't even know what a Halo is, thinks the Master Chief is called John Halo, so, um, should it be set, like, should the TV show be set in modern day lore, and, like, in the current Halo lore? I don't think so, so if it's a branch in timeline, they really can only have the Master Chief unless they do this whole new thing, and it's called Halo. Like, it needs to start revolving around the Halos, and you can't bring in more Halos without implications to the games. So I always thought that it was the smart move to make it a different timeline. And then you have the decision of, well, if the Master Chief doesn't show his face, then none of Silver Team show their face, because it would just be weird if they were all stood in a room and Chief was the only one that just refused to show his face for no actual reason. Like, you'd have to create a weird new law um, implication as to why the Chief just chooses not to show his face. Um, and I just think it humanizes him, man. I just think it gives us someone to, to, to root for on the big screen. Uh, and I... I'm like deep into this rant now, I don't know, 20 minutes in, and I know people aren't gonna agree with me and that's okay. Um, but we had, you know, the chief shows his face in the first episode. Like, we're not here to talk about Master Cheeks. We're not here to talk about whether or not he should have gone butt naked on screen because I don't think he should have. But should he show his face? Yeah, I, I do think so. And, it's this frustrating thing to me 
where um, Halo, I've, you know, I just, I, I, I love Halo more than, more than most things. It, it's been with me my entire life. And it's just sad that we're like going into the second season of a TV show, which first of all, um, new showrunner, new stunt coordinators, new executive producers, a new, like they they just showed a clip of the TV show and the actual Halo music's playing. The vibe seems really good. It's a focus on the fall of reach. We might be about, like we, we might be about to witness some of the greatest Halo media ever. And I just have this real sinking feeling that all people are gonna care about is every time he removes his helmet. And it's just sad to me that like, they'll post a really dope new teaser for the show and the comment section is just filled with this hot steaming hatred for the fact that he removed his helmet. And you, I, I would love you to leave your comments down below and let me know what I'm missing here. But I just, as a lifelong Halo fan, I just don't, I don't see what I'm missing. I don't get what this obsession with him keeping his helmet on is because it just doesn't make sense to me uh, from a, from a story point of view and yeah okay the mandalorian didn't show his helmet yeah okay there's many a uh, face yeah okay there's many other examples but the mandalorian again was sworn to a creed and that was his religion and that was the law the master chief when not in active duty has no reason not to show his hel his face like he's a he's a human and I personally want to view him as a human. I want to view him as a badass super soldier. I want to be hyped every single time he puts that helmet on and goes into battle. And it's season one, despite its flaws, had some really dope action scenes and some really dope stuff. Like the first episode, I watched the first episode again the other day for the season one. Damn, man, it's not even that bad. It's really dope for the majority of it. Even like, think about it from a law perspective. Okay, you're the, first of all, the, the chief goes AWOL in Halo 5, maybe not as much as people hoped, but he goes AWOL because he realizes that the UNSC um, are going to go after Cortana instead of him, right? Imagine Halo Combat Evolved, well, before Halo Combat Evolved, imagine the Master Chief um, is in active duty, he discovers a foreigner artifact, and he suddenly regains memories of his childhood, and he starts to feel deep empathy, and then he removes his, his inhibitor chip. We just, we just don't know what would have happened to the Master Chief if that had happened to him in the mainline Halo games. And yeah, there were some really weird decisions. I don't like when the Chief tries to jump towards Halsey and punch her. That just seems really ridiculous, but so much of it, I, 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 I get, I understand. You know, you know when he um, chooses to save Kai instead of get the artifact back to the UNSC, that's tr the true Master Chief. When he chooses to not execute a child who's the last su su surviving member of an insurrectionist group, especially when um, he failed to see the elite or identify the elite or kill the elite, that then ended up killing her father and the fact that she's told him she, he was the one that killed her mother. Yeah, I think I might question a few things and I might start to think that I need a little bit more time to, to figure this one out. And also let, let's keep in mind, he refuses to kill her um, and then they cut the oxygen to the damn ship. <laughs> like, um, I don't know. The UNSC are not to be trusted. Oni and the UNSC are garbage. They, they are putting the survival of humanity above all other things. Um, and you can you can say what you want about that, but it's, it's like I'm going into this, like I'm probably 25 minutes into this, I've not checked the time. I'm going into this without a script, right? I'm going into this just trying to voice my concerns and my opinion, right? My opinion is that Master Chief should, at select times, when it is appropriate, have his helmet off, particularly when he's not in active duty. I saw a screenshot of, um, or there was a section of the trailer where um, the Covenant clearly boarded or invaded some part of the UNSC and he's fighting without his armor on. And people are complaining about that. I'm like, dude, 
the chief does not always have his armor on. He could have been ambushed and he's like desperately just trying to survive armorless. And I want to see that side of him. I, I'm just like, I, I've, I've had 20 years of this game series. I, I want to see the chief develop further. And then if it comes to the point, I want him to have a noble death. And maybe Jerome takes over because he's a goat. But <laughs> I just, I don't know. If there were times, um, like in Halo Infinite, right? And we're not talking about it being the first time. If there had been many times before this. In Halo Infinite, if Fernandez, Hernandez, um, the pilot was freaking out and they were in, they were on the pelican. He was freaking out. He was saying, I'm turning this pelican around. I'm leaving right now. The chief takes off his helmet to show him that like he, he makes a comment about the chief just being a machine and he's, a, he's about to leave Zeta Halo. The chief takes off his helmet and looks him in the eyes and says, I'm as much of a man as you are. And we have a duty to humanity. We've got to get down there and finish the fight. I would love that. I would love that. Um, I just, I, I just, I don't, I don't really get it. Like, I'm passionate about a lot of things in life, but I just don't really get this, like, absolute cutthroat opinion that the Chief has to have his helmet on at all times. Yeah, he took his helmet off too many times in Halo Season 1. Maybe they'll improve upon that. It, it's clear that they've listened to a lot of feedback. So, like, my opinion is that the Master Chief should have his helmet off occasionally. My hope, or my concern, is that people are about to go into this season of the of the, the TV series, and I, I just, like, I want you as a fan, if I could give you some advice, just go in and enjoy yourself. This is gonna probably be a pretty big banger 10 out of 10, and I'm, I'm concerned for, for Halo fans that they, they can't move past small things that stop them from enjoying the greater picture. Um, and I think that applies to Halo Infinite as well. Um, you know, Halo Infinite's campaign, say what you want about it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The boss battles in the game are like the, some of the most fun I've ever had on Halo. I thought the story was fairly deep. It had a lot of really complex um, sort of um, mystery threads, which should have been resolved better. Um, the music was gorgeous, the sound design was gorgeous, but people just slept on the campaign pretty much immediately. Like, the second the multiplayer came out and it was half-baked, this campaign was sort of just forgotten about at the wayside, it feels like. And so much that is great about Halo Infinite I see the comment section every day and people still just can't get past the fact that there's no playable elites, the fact that there's no regular firefight, the fact that there is an aggressive store. And I have a lot to say about the new spirit of fire operation, right? It's a terrible store. But I just think people need to like, when you're talking about nostalgia and when you're talking about when, when things were better, try and just apply to some of that to what you have today, your, your modern media. And just, in, just try and enjoy it, man. Because, like, life is really complicated and hard. And I just don't want to concern myself with, with things like the Chief taking his helmet off in the show. I won't let that detract away from so much that I think I'm going to enjoy about this show. And hey, again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the show absolutely sucks. But I got a, a pretty damn good feeling it won't. So um, I think that's about it. I might do a follow-up. Um, I At points in this video, I kind of felt like it should have been more scripted, but I just wanted to be honest. I just wanted to get my own, like my, my whole opinion across as best I could. It's something that I've been sat on for a while. And um, let me know in the comments down below if you agree with this. Um, and I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was another video with the domain. Signing off. Have a good day, folks.